Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Capital Compass. We are the official podcast of the New York State Catholic Conference. I'm your host, Jillian. Today, I'll be talking with Dennis Paust, the executive director of the New York State Catholic Conference, about who we are as an organization, our goal for the podcast, and the Catholic Action Network. So, Dennis. Hey, Jillian. Good to be here. First guest. I feel special. Well, we like doing this in-house first time. (laughs) So we want to talk about who we are as an organization, just to kind of give our viewers who exactly we are. I know before I started working here, I didn't really know that we existed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that that's probably not uncommon at all. Um, And when people hear the name, over the years, I've gotten so many calls from people saying, well, when is your conference? When is it happening? Because people think of a conference as an event. But we are a conference of bishops. And it might be better to think of us like like the national name, United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. We're the essentially the New York State Conference of Catholic Bishops, and for short, New York State Catholic Conference. So it's a conference of bishops. We represent the bishops of New York State. And as you know, there are eight dioceses of New York State. And with the Archdiocese of New York being in, in New York City and the, and, and the surrounding area, and Cardinal Timothy Dolan is uh, the Archbishop of New York and the Metropolitan Provincial uh, for the entire state. But we represent all eight of the diocesan bishops, as well as the auxiliary or assistant bishops of the state, and even the retired bishops. They all, they all this, is our, this is their way, we are their way, of speaking with one unified voice on public policy issues that are of interest to the bishops because they're of interest to really the betterment of society. So we talked about who we are, but I bet a lot of people are wondering why exactly we're starting a podcast. (laughs) So right now... Maybe we are. Maybe we're wondering. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we are wondering. So, I mean, in in this time of social media, you get a lot of information with a little bit of video and a lot of still images, but we really wanted to be able to talk to our people and be able to kind of inform them about current legislation and the church's positions on things and really connect to people in the Catholic Church um, and to our listeners. So hopefully we can create this inclusive community. Exactly. And, you know, it's hard to do that in a soundbite or a pretty graphic. I mean, those are important and they have their place. And I think we do a good job of that, of communicating through social media, communicating you know, with, with our folks on the, on the, on the internet, communicating through the, through the secular and Catholic media even. Uh, but this is a way for us to really kind of go a little bit more in depth uh, into positions or Catholic social teaching or whatever the current issues are of the day. Yeah, we really want to start a discussion with everybody else and, um, again, connect with the people. Yeah. Exactly. One of the big things for the New York State Catholic Conference is the Catholic Action Network. Can you tell me a little more about that, Dennis? Yeah, sure. Well, this was something that we started many years ago. I've been here uh, boy, long, longer than I care to remember. I am the executive director now, but I used to be the communications director. And so I was involved when the Catholic Action Network was founded, oh, pr- more than 15 years ago. And it's a way to reach Catholics directly. You know, I like to say that, you know, there was a time when there was no need to have a Catholic Action Network. It was enough for a cardinal or a bishop to just say, I don't like this. And the legislature would listen. The governor would listen. Oh, the Catholics don't like that. Back in the 1950s and 60s, when Cardinal Spellman was the Archbishop of New York, they referred to the cardinal's residence on Madison Avenue as the powerhouse because it was such an influential uh, part, not just of New York State, but of, of the United States. Uh, presidents uh, you know, w- w- would look to the cardinal for his position on things. And while we still have some of that influence, and the cardinal obviously still is in communication with, with political leaders, including the president, it's just not enough anymore uh, for a variety of reasons for the bishops to just make a pronouncement and say, this is the way it's going to be, and for politicians to follow suit. Politicians, you know, they're political animals, obviously, by their nature. And so, you know, there, there are a couple of things that influence them, I've found, uh, and, and I'm not alone in this, money and voters. Well, we can't help them on the, on the money part because we don't contribute to political campaigns. We're not even permitted to if we wanted to by IRS regulations. So we can't offer them that. We can't 
make campaign contributions, which is how a lot of policy gets made in the state and around the country with big money. So what we can do, or at least we can try to do, is to influence voters, to influence voters to influence their officials. So the Catholic Action Network, that I know, I'm, you know, maybe I'm going on too long, but the Catholic Action Network is a way for us to reach Catholics via the internet, via, you know, from email or text messages. We send them action alerts when there's something important going on. Say, for instance, there's going to be a vote in the in a health committee on assisted suicide. We might target a, a, a campaign directly to people whose members are on that committee. Or for another issue, we might t- uh, send it to our entire network. Right now we have, I think, about 65,000 people in our network. That number sounds high, but when you think about the number of Catholics we have in the state, it's pretty low, and we'd like to grow that number. And so then, just by clicking a link, it, t- it takes them to a pre-written email that generally they can edit however they want to personalize it, and we encourage that. And uh, once they put in their, their mailing address, our system will connect them automatically with their correct legislators. So if we're targeting the state legislature, their assembly member and senator will pop up automatically. You don't need to know that your state senator is John Smith and your assembly member is Jane Smith. The system does that for you. It's so easy. And so it takes about a minute or less uh, to send an alert, and they listen. Legislators will listen, and often you'll even get a response from them. Sometimes it's a canned response, sometimes a personal response. But believe me, they count those up. They make Their staff makes a note of, we got this many emails and calls that say, you know, support this, and we got this many that say oppose this bill, and they take it into consideration. That's how we can be effective. And that's why it's so important that we grow the network. Now, we deal with a lot of controversial Mm -hmm. um, political positions. And I know, at least on our social media, we get a lot of complaints about this. Um, But I want to kind of clarify that these are the church's public policy positions. And we are not affiliated with any party. Exactly. So... I just want to iterate that our public policy positions basically come from USCCB Mm -hmm. and, you know, coming down from the Vatican, essentially, Mm -hmm. through Catholic social teaching. It's not one party or the other. Bingo. And and the key word there is Catholic social teaching, because all of what we do uh, is in some way grounded in Catholic social teaching. And I know we'll do episodes maybe uh, on this podcast on the seven principles of Catholic social teaching uh, and get more into it. But that is where the bishops get their positions from. And it's sometimes on some issues, there are a lot of issues that, you know, we, you, know you and I, we, every day we, we see every bill that's introduced in the legislature that day, and we go through them, and only a small number of them are of interest to us in terms of this could have some Catholic social teaching application. And what does that mean? Well, it impacts uh, the poor and vulnerable in either a good way or a bad way, right? It impacts the environment. It impacts uh, un- unborn life, developing human life, or maybe uh, end of life, people at the end of life, in terms of talking about assisted suicide and euthanasia. Maybe it affects people in prison uh, and how we treat people in prison, um, do we treat them justly? Are these bills to make the correction system more humane or less humane? So there are any number of Catholic social teaching, oh, labor issues, there are any number of Catholic social teaching uh, avenues that we look at when we're examining bills. Uh, so it means we look at a lot of bills and we take positions on a lot of bills. Um, and we don't just do that as staff. It's not like Jillian and Dennis and uh, you know Kathy and Jim, our staff here, sit around and say, you know, we feel this way politically, so we're going to take this position. Now, it comes from our bishops, like you said, and consistent church teaching, and some of that is filtered up through our our folks in the dioceses on an education bill, Catholic schools bill. We have so many Catholic school issues that we deal with, and so we are in constant communication and consultation with our uh, superintendents of schools, our diocesan superintendents of schools and their staffs. We work in coalition uh, with the uh, New York State Coalition of Independent and Religious Schools. Uh, so and that makes us 
a a more powerful block, but also you know it helps us to formulate our opinions. In the same way, we get information from the Respect Life directors in the dioceses, from the Catholic Charities directors in the diocese. So often, I'll hear from a charities director or you know a staff member in a Catholic Charities agency saying, "Hey, this bill might hurt one of our agencies, and can, can you look at this?" And it might be one that I overlooked, uh, that I didn't see an, immediately, that had and it might have an impact on how, say, we care for people with disabilities or how we treat addiction. And so then we will get involved and we'll write. We'll write to to the legislature and and even lobby in person and say, this is important and this is why. Where can people find the Catholic in Action Network or what we call CAN? Well, it's super easy and it's getting easier all the time. You can go to our website, which is www.nyscatholic.org, and there is prominent join the network button right there on the home page and on every interior page. And then you just sign up and you'll get our email alerts. Uh, another way to do it, which uh, a lot of people today prefer, is just to text. Uh, you could text a five-digit number. It's 50457. It's like when you're voting on American Idol and you, and you, and you vote and you have to put in a five-digit number. For, so for us, you text the word CAN for Catholic Action Network, just C-A-N to 50457. And that will get you uh, signed up. You might have to, again, give, it might give you a link to fill out if you've not taken action before, to fill out your information so we know if you're supposed to get a particular alert. Because, again, it's important. People say, well, why do you need my home address? Well, we need your home address so we can connect you to your legislator. It's important to remember we never do anything with the information people send us other than to send them alerts. Every once in a while, if a diocese asks us to send an alert on their behalf, um, we will do that, but we're not sharing that with the, even with the diocese. We're sending it on their behalf, but 99.9% of the time, it's just generating from our office. We don't sell it. We don't give it to anybody for political contributions. We don't give it to the development offices and the dioceses to raise funds. Uh, it's strictly for uh, to keep people informed uh, you know, the bishops talk about faithful citizenship, and we're all called to be faithful citizens. This is how in New York State the bishops have determined we could best become faithful citizens and, and we could become informed citizens. Because to be a faithful citizen, you have to be informed. You have, it's not just enough to say, I'm going to vote my conscience. You, you have to inform your conscience. You have to understand exactly uh, what you're voting for, who you're supporting, and why you're supporting them. And all of that, I think, people, if we're doing it right, it helps people. It doesn't answer all your questions. We can't tell you who to vote for, but it could help you form your conscience. Thank you so much for listening to the first ever episode of the Capital Compass podcast. And thank you so much to Dennis Paus, the executive director of the New York State Catholic Conference. We hope you enjoy this episode, and we'll be coming out with a new episode every other week. If you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and a review. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And to catch all the latest from the conference, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at NYSCatholicConf and on Facebook at NYSCatholicConference. Thanks again, and God bless.